Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. So today we're going to take a quick look at Hackchi once again and talk about more in depth on the uses and how you can go about hacking your Super Nintendo Classic Edition. So just a few hours ago, version 2.21B has been released and it has a few little tweaks to it, has better compatibility, updated database of the preset IDs built-in database of problem games. So there's gonna be certain games that give issues and Hackchi will ask you, would you like to switch to RetroArch instead of the built-in emulator in order to play those games? And then it also states original games are not using extra memory space anymore. So we have some extra space for additional games. So that's nice, a little tweak to that, giving you a little more extra space. The remove thumbnails mod no longer slows down the startup. That's pretty cool, but I much prefer leaving the thumbnails on, but that's something that you can change. Bundled with new mod SNES custom filters, which allows to disable scan lines in CRT mode or enable bilinear filter in 4x3 mode. And you have to read the mod description before installing. Bundled with the new mod extra space, this is experimental mod for the SNES mini, which moves your save state data to an unused partition of the NAND flash. This partition is only 50 megabytes, but it will free up some space for games because the SNES mini save states are huge. And it also says, make sure you read the mod, the description before installing that. And then there's some other minor bug fixes, instructions for new users, you know, go ahead and install the app, whatever, easy peasy. But to get the new version, the download is right here. Link will be in the description of this video so you can grab this. If you want to make sure you have the best compatibility and the easiest time of transferring your games over make sure you get this version and just keep up to date check this page occasionally find out what new additions have been made if any to make your time easier quicker and you know have a cleaner nicer time hacking your super nintendo classic edition but without further ado let's go ahead and take a look at hack chi and talk about some of the features of this and this is going to be regardless if you're in version 2.2 or version 2.21b which is the new version here but just to show you guys because a lot of people were kind of annoyed you know chrono trigger look at this squished box art it's just kind of gross whenever you google it that's all you all you get from using the google feature but if you download your own box art, be it through Google, you know, Google Images or MU Movies, Sync, anything like that, if you have that file on your PC, go ahead and click Browse. And you see on my desktop in my SNES Classic folder, I do have a different box art for Chrono Trigger. So go ahead and open that up. And that fits a little nicer with the way the other box art looks. So now I'm squared away as far as the box art. So just of note, you can either Google the image. If it does not give you the proper image, you can browse and select one that you have downloaded yourself. And you can also, the game options up here, if you double check everything, make sure you know your publisher, all that stuff is correct. You could change this. You can uncompress, but it, it, it's better to keep it compressed. That way, you know, you're saving some space because as you see, Compressed, we're at 2,861 kilobytes. Uncompressed, we're at almost double, at 4,174 for Chrono Trigger. So if you leave everything compressed, you're going to fit more games. And then here, if for some reason it recognized the game with the wrong amount of players, you could change that. The release date, you can also change if it's not correct. And then there is some command line that you can change, which is for advanced users only. You can also add Game Genie codes if you so choose, I typically don't mess with any of that. So just looking through here, if you just go to file, you're pretty much getting all the functions that these buttons down here do. So we're not really gonna mess with that. Kernel, you can dump your kernel, which when you initially do this, it does dump your, your original kernel. And I'll show you where that is located. And you're going to want to make sure you have that original kernel backed up just in case you want to reflash your Super Nintendo Classic to have the original kernel. In my opinion, not everybody will share this, but if you decide at some point you want to resell this, 
to somebody who's a, you know, I wouldn't even say purist, but somebody who wants the original hardware and the original form, the value is, is there when it hasn't been touched or hasn't been hacked. And if you just put your original flash, your original kernel back on there, there's no signs that the system was ever hacked. And some people would much prefer that. Some people, you know, if you were in the business of reselling these, or if you got to the point where you just needed some money, you know, I, I don't knock anybody either way, how you go about your life and your decisions as far as selling things. I don't really care. It's a free, you know, free market. But if you ever did decide to resell it, you know, you have that option of putting the original kernel back on there or just leaving the, the custom kernel with the additional games, whatever. Some people may look at that as an added value. Some people may not. So you have the option there to fix that to your liking. Um, and then, you know, you have several other options, but really more so for, for advanced users. Us, the only thing you may ever need to use, like I said, is flash your original kernel to get back to the original state. The rest of these you probably don't need to do because dumping the kernel and flashing the custom kernel is done upon your initial setup when you first hook your system up and try to synchronize your selected games. So you really shouldn't have to mess with much of that. Now, this is where your, your extra modules will be. And right now, the only ones that I have on here are going to be the music hack, password, and the remove thumbnails. So as you see, if you select it, it'll tell you what it is. So the music hack is kind of cool. It will let you change the, the background music that the Super Nintendo Classic plays. So that's a cool one. You would just make sure the box is selected if you wanted to do that. And then it explains it over here. Just replace the music.wav file if you want to hear your own music in the menu of the SNES Mini or NES Mini. These all work for both the NES and SNES. So as you see up here, it says NES slash SNES. Password, this module adds password protection to your Mini. Default password is the Konami code. So once you install that, you can change the password. But I mean, I don't really see a use in that. I guess if you don't want anybody turning on your system and screwing with your save states, or if you have, you know, a bunch of little kids running around, that could come in handy. Remove thumbnails. This removes thumbnails at the bottom of the screen. So if you add, the, the reason this can be handy, for me, I prefer to leave them on there. I won't even mess with this. But the reason you would put that is because if you overburden the amount of games on the system, depending upon your file structure, it will, you know, it'll look sloppy with all the thumbnails at the bottom. So if you remove it, there's no thumbnails at the bottom. It's just your select screen that you're scrolling through the, the games in the middle of the screen. So that's where that comes in handy. So that's it for the, the, the modules. And you can always go back and uninstall them if you so chose. And then in settings, you could choose your language. You could select which system you are using. So this supports every one of the classic systems. The NES Classic Mini, which will be European or US release. Famicom Mini, which is gonna be the Japanese release. SNES Classic Mini, that's gonna be the US or European. Or the Super Famicom Mini, which is the Japanese release. This Hackchi 2.2 or 2.21, supports all the all the classic systems so no worry if you have a japanese european or us version works on all of them but that's where you could select which system you are working with now this is where you can mess with the folder folder structure as far as the way the display looks when you boot up the system and you have your game selected so right now i have set mine to disable pages and folders so what that'll do is just put all your games in sequence on that front screen. You won't have the more games folder. You won't have page breaks. You won't have anything like that. That's where the rest of these come into play. Original games in root, automatic and subfolder, pages split games equally. So that just gives you extra folders, splits up the games. Yeah, there's tons of options with that. If you, if you just do disable, like I said, all the games will be on the front screen. If you're only doing a handful of games and you want it to see to look seamless, just like the original, you know, kernel on the system with the original games, disable page folders is what you'd want to do. But that only looks really good if you only add a handful of games. If you add way too many, then those thumbnails at the bottom, 
won't look legit anymore, but you can always install that extra model and module and change that. So there's that for the page fold folder structure. That's where you'd want to mess with the look of how your games are formatted on the, the, the user interface. I'm leaving it at disable page folders just because it looks nice for me, only adding a handful of games. Controller hacks. So by default, none of those should be selected. But the controller hack is neat. If you go ahead and select use button combination to reset, and then you go back in there, it'll you've got the option now, select reset button combination. So it's gonna automatically be set to select and start. So with it being set to select and start, once you're in your games or playing anything, if you press select and start together, it'll, it'll reset the system, exit you back to the, well, not really reset, but it, it's like you press the reset button, exits you back to the main screen. You can do your save state, select a different game, whatever. So that's where the controller hacks come into place. You can also, so you would go ahead back in controller hacks you the next option that you have is use select plus a b to enable auto fire so you could set you know turbo auto fire type thing to the controller so using select plus a and b enables auto fire on a and b and then so on and so forth for the rest of these pretty interesting controller hacks so compress games when adding if you just leave that checked every game that you add will be compressed while it is being added. And then if you go save settings to SNES, NES mini now, it'll go ahead and synchronize everything and you will be good to go. You also have a save state manager you can go into and mess with your save states and, and back them up and so on and so forth. Pretty interesting stuff. So that's pretty much it. Once you've put your system connected to your PC with a USB, all you'll want to do is, you know, not power it on or anything. It'll prompt you. So say you want to add more games. We've already, I've already selected games to add. So everything is added here, but I need to go ahead and get my pilot wings box art because I reselected. Um, so if you leave, the original games checked, your original games will stay on there. If you uncheck it, it takes them off. If you have it checked and then you're like, you know what, I don't want Contra on there. You can manipulate that and remove, you know, whatever games you so choose. But once you have added more games to your, to your system, well, it's not really added yet, but once you've added everything and then you've gone through, put your box art, you would click synchronize selected games with the NES or SNES mini now. So please do the following steps. Connect your you know system to the PC, turn it on. If you haven't done this already, it'll essentially tell you to hold the reset button, to hold the reset button and then press the power button on until your system recognizes it. But now, you know, we're processing the games. Everything's being installed pretty quick and easy, to be honest with you. Nothing major to this. We're going to go ahead and let it make these additions that I've added. And then we'll go ahead and take a quick look at how my system looks now with these new games. So right now we're done. We are going to go ahead, click OK power our system off, plug her back into our TV. And I, I recommend not having the power plugged into your PC to plug that into either the, the USB that was provided with the power supply or plug it into your TV. Doing it that way will be a lot better. You know, you don't risk anything weird happening or hack chi accidentally opening during, you know, when you actually want to play the system. So make sure you, your power supply is not connected to the PC when you actually want to play. Okay, so now we are back on our system. And as you see, I've added a handful of extra games, Pilot Wings, for example. What else did we add? Evo, Search for Eden is on here. 
Doom, Chrono Trigger, Dracula X. So everything is added and I have it on the main screen instead of a folder, which is pretty neat. So that's pretty much where it's at, guys. Um, there is a list if you want to use the Super Nintendo emulator that's included on the system. There is a compatibility list, and I will show you where that's at right now. So our compatibility list is going to be located here on this Google Docs spreadsheet. And I'll provide that in the, the description. Link will be there. And you can go through here. This is pretty much just saying, hey, um, these are the games that are compatible with the included emulator on the SNES Classic Mini. Um, but like I said, with the updated Hackchi, it will tell you if the game has an issue and if you want to load it through RetroArch instead of the included emulator. Me personally, I it's nice to have RetroArch on the system, but I much prefer having only the games that run through the, the emulator that's included in the system. That's just my personal preference. Some people will be different, but I do like going through this list and saying, okay, yeah, I can, I can add these games that I want. No big deal. So I hope you guys appreciate this video. It's a little longer look at Hackchi, some of the updates to it, and how a lot of the functions work. So I really appreciate you guys watching. Smash that like button if you could. Subscribe if you have not done so already. And with that said, guys, I will catch y'all next time. Boom!